So I've asked you all to give me questions about our lifestyle and I can answer them for you. It's much easier for me to actually sit here and talk to you about it than trying to actually write it all down in a comment or an email or replying to all the questions that are coming in and I'm loving the questions. Um, we got a question in regard to our seat belts on our um, blog. Thank you Jill from Going Anyway. Thank you for your great question about our seat belts. I'll show you in a minute. I'll climb underneath the lounge and pull one out and you can have a look at it. I actually thought it was from Super Cheap Auto in Mackay but it was from... Oh. It's actually from Repco that we got the seat belts. Um, they were something like sixty to seventy dollars each. Don't quote me on that, but yeah, just check out Repco and just tell them you need a car seat belt that can be approved. We did get these seats approved and the seat belts so that we can have everybody in the bus approved to travel with us. Um, not everyone, I can't take the whole world with us, but our family. So we have seven seat belts. Each state in Australia has different rules and regulations. In Queensland, we got caught out because we didn't have a dining table. If you don't have a dining table, they won't class your motor home as a motor home. You must have a dining table. It must be able to be fixed to the floor and also stored elsewhere when traveling because you're not allowed to have your dining table up near the seats because it becomes a, a missile. It's dangerous. Um, so check your states where you're going to register your bus because each state is different. I have heard no, I'm not sure if this is true, but I have heard that Victoria is the easiest state to register your bus in for a motorhome. Don't quote me, that could be wrong. I know that because of our size of our bus, as far as I know, <laughs> this could change, we don't have to go and get it um, looked at again by a mechanic. We don't have to have it taken into the motor registry again. We just get it registered in January. Um, because we have a fixed address where we have our shipping container stored. So all our post goes to this address and then the, they forward it on to us. So we can just in January get it registered again and it will be in Queensland plates. Because our plan from here is to go to Perth and then all the way around back through Queensland again. Not sure when that's going to happen. So we'll keep the Queensland plates. For the time being. <laughs> it could change though, mind you. David changes his mind quite regularly. So yeah, the seat belts, um, we had them approved in Mackay by a certified guy who looks at seats and says yes, they're strong enough for an accident. Not saying that we want an accident, but David built them and they're extremely heavy. He welded every single section of that seat separately and then welded it together and then he went back to the motor registry page and checked all the specific requirements. There's a spreadsheet there that shows you what you must have in a seat and he double shored and triple shored. He made it all fit to the requirements so that it would be approved. Um, and the guy that checked it for plate numbers to give us a plate to certify us to carry seven said he's never seen seat belts and seats so well made and put in ever in his whole entire career of approving seats. So David did a really good job of bolting them in and I'll show you in a minute how he bolted them in. And then he did a really good job of making sure the seat belts were bolted to the actual underneath framework of the bus so it's not just bolted into the floor it's actually bolted in safely so the seat bolts are never going to come out unless of course he undoes them so that was that question i hope that answers that for you jill um, i'm sorry i gave you the wrong shop <laughs> in the blog post so it's repco that you need to go to for seat belts not super cheap auto um, we have more questions about homeschooling coming in I'm hoping that I can answer them for you. Each state's different and different rules and for your family it will be different what you want to do. Um, I'm leaning towards more natural learning because I'm around the kids every day, five days a week, seven days a week, 24-7. I'm around Cameron and Kyle. Cameron is 11 and Kyle's 7 um, and we don't force them to read. 
we don't force them to do anything they pick up their books and they decide what they're going to do because Cameron's such a good reader he's really good with his homeschooling he'll just grab a book and he'll fly through the pages I like him to do four pages a day but again it's up to him if that's what he wants to do he does it if he wants to do more then I'm happy he does more um, we do connect with homeschooling groups as we're traveling we're connected with the Illawarra homeschooling group down in the Wollongong area and we've had a fantastic time meeting up with them it's been fantastic they are such a welcoming crowd of people unbelievable we've been to the pool we've been to a beach we've driven into Sydney and went into the equestrian center had the most amazing tour behind the scenes it was fantastic um, so yeah if you can jump onto Yahoo 7 groups you will find homeschooling groups in your area and that's how I've been connecting with others I couldn't actually find the Illawarra homeschooling group through that way like I normally can but I put it out on our fast on our <laughs> I put it out on our Facebook page hey is there any homeschoolers in the area and a wonderful lady connected me with a homeschooling group so thank you so much so um, connect with other homeschoolers ask a lot of questions find what works for you um, I'm not able to commit to a hell of a lot of work book work so I didn't go that way but if you are more inclined and have more hours then you can go through the Department of Education um, yeah so just find out what works for you and go with that way we use Frank and Valerie Homeschooling Supplies Australia to get our books I haven't purchased in them about a year now so they've been using their books for about a year I'm probably due to look at getting some more for Cameron and getting a few more for Kyle but I won't look at that until probably the next school term um, I'm hoping that I can answer any more questions that come on through we have a lot of questions in regards to cooking we don't have an oven we have a gas cooktop David would love an oven. I'm really sorry that he didn't get one put in. Um, there was no room. There was no room for an oven. He's been looking at working out if he can put a... It's like a microwave oven, but it's not a normal microwave because we won't use a microwave. But it's a, like a convention oven, I think it's called. He's looking at being able to put one in the top cupboard down the front. I'm not keen because I have to clean it then. <laughs> I don't like cooking. So I do the cleaning. Um, I'm glad we don't have an oven because I don't like cleaning the big monstrous things. Um, yeah, so we have a gas cooktop. We do have a chuffa, which is a, a gas bottle converted into a barbecue. But we're not allowed to use that at the moment because we're too close to a petrol station, unfortunately. Um, we only have a shower. We don't have a toilet on board. Big big huge bummer and wish we did have one David's looking at putting in a marine toilet I'm not sure when or not sure how he'll work that out um, we were looking yesterday at moving caravan parks so if we do that I can do a little blog review on where we are at the moment um, husband David he doesn't like me to tell you guys where we are he's very secure security conscious um, he used to be a security guard years ago so he thinks of his kids and his safety issues and family reasons so I can't tell you where we are at the moment but I can say we're in Wollongong and we're loving it so we looked at another caravan park yesterday that's a bit more out of the wind if we move there I can reveal where we were um, the wind here is crazy the other night it was 110 kilometer winds and the bus was literally shaking like that we were in bed and I was like, we're in a boat, we're not in a bus. Um, and David had to fill the water tanks up underneath just to give us a bit more stability. Not that it really helped. So yeah, that's it for this week. And if you have any more questions, pop them on through. I'm, I'm loving getting your questions. I love to answer them. So I'm going to get up, pause the video, and I'm going to show you our seat belts and seats. So thanks guys for watching. I shall see you soon. So I'm at our seats. This is the seat near the driver's door. So it's just a long shaped seat. Um, David built them. 
he welded all these bits here separately and then welded them all together and then he's bolted them into framework that he's built underneath to actually make it twice as strong so underneath all these are actually bolted into framework I'm just trying to see if I can grab one of the seat belts so you can see it of course we don't need the seat belts while we're sitting here so we just tuck them in underneath but I'm trying to see if I can show you one of the bolts. I don't know if you can see it. It's a silver bit down here at the back here. So that's bolted into framework underneath the bus, so it's made it twice as strong. Um, like I said in the video, the guy that approved the seats has never seen seat belts and seats made so strong before. And he approved these ones straight away. Funny enough, excuse the mess, I'm not clean today, and got an anchor for his seat belt. So he's anchored it to the floor because he originally had it anchored to the seat which was what the original seat had and that did not get approved and because it's a spring foam seat he had to have this added and bolted down to make it stronger so I'm going to clean the bus as you can see but we've been lazy today haven't we Cameron mm. lazy bum bums so I'm hoping that will answer all your questions in regards to the seats and the seat belts if you have any more questions pop them through underneath this video or on Facebook Twitter or even email me I'll have all the links underneath here I'm looking forward to reading the next lot of questions that come on through um, I'm hoping that I answer yours if not give me more <laughs> thanks guys it's Lisa from newlifeontheroad.com bye guys